Blessed morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday worship service. On this occasion of Trinity and Freedom Sunday, let us remember the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and also remember to freely abide by them. Let's be guided by the Holy Spirit and promise to live a life following our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. At this point in time, let us all rise and sing our song of fellowship. Oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Wisdom calls and understanding speaks. Majestic God, we recognize your voice. Creation declares your glory and humanity marvels at your care. Merciful God, we rejoice at your works. Peace, endurance, character, and hope are gifts. Mysterious God, we receive your love in thanksgiving. Let us pray. God our potter, God who becomes clay, God who shapes us in the fire, we are made new in your presence. We come seeking your wisdom, crying out our concerns, needing your peace. Use this time to form us as community, connected through your breath, life and hope that propels us as your body in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we confess that we do not always heed the wisdom you impact. We turn toward other marks and means of validation rather than toward you. We remain in awe of our own creation. Continue to call us, we pray, and to surprise and delight us 
at your magnificence and majesty. May we always be at awe at your glory and humbled by your nearness. Let our character be shaped toward hope and reflect your peace. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, receive the peace extended to us from God of grace who joined our embodied experience and who invites us to share glory of the resurrected life in which we are made new and whole. Good morning, everyone. Today, we celebrate Freedom and Trinity Sunday. And so we give thanks to God for the freedom we experience that allows us to worship God in spirit and in truth. We thank God for creating and recreating, for God's saving grace through Jesus Christ, and for sustaining us through the Holy Spirit, our God in three persons. We praise God for the gift of life and extension of life, especially for those who are celebrating their birthdays, anniversaries, and for those who have passed their exams and those who are able to finish their studies. Congratulations to each and every one of you. To God be the glory. We also give thanks to God for gathering us together in this sacred place. May God continue to be with us in our undertakings in life. At this time, we are going to install the CRO officers, the CYF, the CWA and the UCM. The CF will have their status quo yet, so we don't need to install the old officers. We also would like to extend to everyone once again our deepest gratitudes and thanks for all the things that you have done in our lives for your support to the life and ministry of the church. Our prayers is that as we start another ecclesiastical year, God will continue to bless you, to guide you, and to use you to be a blessing to others. Let's now prepare our hearts and mind as we bring to God our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers of supplication. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we thank you for this time for gathering us together to worship you in spirit and in truth. You are our God, known as wisdom before the dawn of creation, Lord Jesus Christ, perfect love made flesh, Holy Spirit of God ever present. We thank you for your love, 
for your grace and for uniting us. Our hidden source of life, you wrapped up in perfect trinity. And so we meditate upon the great and gracious plan which you have brought to pass. That women and men like us should look beyond creation to worship you, the creator of all things. In the beginning, you, the uncreated, moved across the face of deep and brought out space and time and then material substance, the atom of the molecule and the crystalline form, then the first germ of life and the long upwards traveling of all things that swim and creep and fly. And then the miracle of intelligence and consciousness, the beginning of mystery, and the building of the final altar. And then the saying of the first prayer. O loving God, we ask for your forgiveness for those times when we have taken this mystery for granted. And forgive us all the more for the times when we thought that we had unraveled the mystery and thought that we knew it all, the how and where and why. Lord, let us not harbor anything in our hearts that might spoil our fellowship with you or with one another. And so we ask your help to work with us and within us. Do what you will with us, O Lord. Make of us what you want of us. Change us as we need change. And use us as your will, as your will requires. Come, O God, and speak to us as we worship you today. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and Amen. Thank you. 
The basis of our meditation this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that a father has is mine. And for this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Here is the reading of the gospel, God's holy word. Grace to you and peace from God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, today is Trinity Sunday. But what does that mean? May we take the opportunity to take the limits of our understanding of who God is and embrace the humility of never fully figuring that out. At the same time, we have the glorious possibility to discover more of the character and nature of the limitless God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God and my Redeemer. Amen. My dear friends, our Gospel reading are part of Jesus' final instruction and encouragement to his disciples, given to them at the upper room after he had eaten his supper with them. This was the end. For three years, Jesus had taught them, lived with them, and loved them, and now the culmination of his love was at hand in the sacrifice of his life for theirs. You know, they didn't understand, just as we still don't fathom the depth of what he did. They saw the truth in everything he did, in every word he spoke, and in every essence. Now, Jesus is leaving them. The lessons were over, and he was trusting them with everything that was his. But during that time, a life of faith develops from experience and participation. Jesus invites us into a relationship based on presence rather than a religion based on a set of doctrine. In fact, his displays of anger and judgment responded to the religious leaders imposing their personal piety upon others and attempting to profit from the gift of grace, which God gives freely. Truth, in this case, resides within the relationship and the opportunity it inspires, forms, develops, and nurtures. But it originated from the community that God has within God's self, the Trinity. The Trinity is a human attempt to define the internal divine relationship which we don't understand. Yet, it is a way of understanding the Holy One and the mystery behind. For me, Trinity is challenging to preach because it requires humility to affirm what we don't know, we don't understand, and can't explain while proceeding with the attempt to make sense of it, to find the truth of it. Trinity is a description of the unique relationship of God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Spirit. There are many references to the Trinity in the scripture, such as today's reading in John. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he refers to the Holy Spirit as well as to the Father. He says, Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus goes on to say, When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Then, he refers to the Father when he says, I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. Another text referring to the Trinity is Mark 1 verse 10. As Jesus was coming up out of the water at his baptism, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Again, you see evidence of all three persons in the Godhead. It's still confusing, isn't it? But let me try to share to you some illustrations. They said there are several ways to visually explain it. One is with an egg, you have the egg shell, the egg yolk, and the egg white. They are three distinct parts, but they are all egg. Another way to explain the Trinity is by referring to water, a glass of water, an ice cube, or steam. It is different, but all water. And so we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are three distinct persons, but one God. Now, we're all UCCP. Let's try to recall the statement of faith of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines who confesses and affirms its belief in one God. Can you remember it? Can you memorize the first stanza? It says, We believe in one God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, who provides order, purpose, meaning and fulfillment to all creation. That in Jesus Christ who was born of Mary, God became human and is sovereign Lord of life and history. And that in the Holy Spirit that is present in the world, empowering and guiding believers to understand and live out their faith in Jesus Christ. My dear friends, no one can fully understand nor completely explain who God really is. But let me share these things. God is a God of many names. We believe in one God. It is this God who created everything. And this one God made the divine self known in different ways. So we also experience and encounter God in different ways. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, the early church and modern times, we continue to experience God's revelation in different ways. These experiences of God have caused people to call our God many names. Remember during the a uh, communicant class, if you pass the communicant class, your pastors were trying to explain this trinity to you, as simple as it is. 
Say, for example, in the Old Testament, there are many names there of God. They call God as creator, Yahweh, I am who I am, and I will be who I will be. Or Elohim, supreme being who is the only true God. Deliverer, Father, Shepherd, Rock, Judge, King, Spirit, Rushing Wind. And in the New Testament, they call God Abba, Father, like in Luke chapter 2, verse 49, and in John 8, 38. Jesus is a Greek word for Joshua or Yeshi, which means God saves us. Our Messiah, Christ, the Anointed One, Lord, Master. Greek Cairo is Sovereign Lord, which indicates position of authority. A Rabbi, Teacher, Redeemer, Son of Man. Servant, ectos, the Greek word for fish, which is actually an acronym for Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. The fish symbol showed powerful declaration of faith. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Savior. And also, the Holy Spirit is described as the power that inspires believers to do good, to spread the good news of Jesus' resurrection, to endure hardship and suffering for God's sake, and to overcome evil. This and other forms of names that we can see in the Bible you know, Jesus promises that the spirit of truth will lead us into all truth. It is a journey. And along the way, God shows up in manifold ways. God is the comforter in times of grief. God is our encourager in times in despair. And God is the healer. When we experience illness and disease, God is righteous and just when the world is not. God is everlasting when we are overwhelmed by the temporary. God is loved when we hate or when hate surrounds us and consumes us. And God is our friend our companion, power, and source, the Alpha and Omega, and so much more. And you know, the more we know of who God is, the more we understand the image in which we are created. Humanity is a collection of creators, many me's, deployed in the world, and following the path of God with us to be the beloved community and to live in love and truth. Let the Spirit lead us so that we may show up in many and boundless ways with all the truth. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are so with one another and to the extent that they are in one another, we call God not three, but one. And these three persons in one substance, always affirming one another's differences and distinctness in person and presence, but always bearing within one another the whole being of the other two persons says Samuel Wells. Also, let's remember 
that Jesus Christ is the way God become human and live among people. Jesus lived a life that taught us to live close to God's people and all of God's creation. Remember, Jesus as a child played with friends in their neighborhood, went to school in the synagogue, worked at home with the family, and also questioned practices, laws, and actions of people that were not making people live peacefully and happily. Jesus, as an adult, was teaching people about God's kingdom, helping and caring for one's people's human beings, healing and praying over those who were sick, feeding the hungry people, exorcising demons, forgiving and loving sinners, showing kindness and caring for children, and correcting those who considered themselves good and godly, but were making others unhappy. Jesus primarily taught people two important things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And second is to love our neighbor or human being as God loves us. That's in Luke 4 and 5 and Matthew 22, 37 to 39. God in Jesus Christ loved us so much. We remember the verse, John 3, 16, that God wanted us to live a happy and abundant life. And it is Jesus, in Jesus' death on the cross that made it possible for men, women, and children to live happily and abundantly. Jesus saved us from our sinfulness, and we should be thankful, thankful for him. And until at present, my dear friends, the Holy Spirit is present in the world since the beginning of creation. He is present, guiding and leading Christ's followers. However, after Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit, as promised by Jesus, appeared to the disciples on the day of the Pentecost. That's in Acts 1.5. When the disciples and early Christians received the Holy Spirit, and from that time on, they were no longer afraid to speak the truth about Jesus' resurrection. This is what Jesus promised in Luke 24 to 49 and in Acts 1 8. The life of the Spirit is a life of truth, humility, change, and renewal, simplicity, honesty compassion and confession but you know most of all it is the life in the spirit it's the life with the spirit is a life of community in fellowship we can recognize the holy spirit through experience guiding us and giving us power to do what god wants us to do and today, the Holy Spirit continues to work through those who are willing to recognize and accept it. And so, let's remember, this doctrine of Trinity explains that there is only one God who revealed in three ways. As a father or a parent, God is understood by people as creator and that all comes from God's power. God is the beginning of all things and created everything. And second, the people experience God as human being in Jesus, joining and participating in the affairs of the people which God created. And the people said, Emmanuel, God with us. Because of this Jesus Christ, 
was called by the people the Son of God. And lastly, at the time when Jesus ascended to heaven, the people again experienced God's presence even if Jesus was no longer with them through the Holy Spirit. And so these three ways of God's revelation tell us the depth of God's mystery. And so we have to acknowledge our limitations of fully knowing who God is and to settle with the concept of Trinity to describe this mystery. So the Father, our parent, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet they are not three gods, but one God. So let's remember that. And when we say God is the Creator, it also tells us that God is the Redeemer and God the Sustainer because it is God who creates new life and redeems the old to make it new and moreover sustains what is being created and redeemed because God is continually a Creator God. Lastly, today, People have realized that God is more than the Trinity and is continually revealing to people and the whole creation. And God's revelation on inclusivity of all creation, which includes men, women, children, and nature, or the whole creation, leads us to reflect on the 60th portrayal of God as the Father and the Son. Let us also acknowledge that God is also a mother or a parent God. Let us keep in mind that God is mystery. And the words that we have discussed are just limited attempts to try to explain who God is. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, God should not end here. But we need to continue to experience God's continuing revelation to us in order to deepen our faith, our trust, and our understanding of who God is. Amen and Amen. Giver, steward, and guide, may these gifts we bring magnify beyond the boundaries of our community to create new possibilities in the world. Let us now give our tithes pledges and other gifts.
Let us pray. Generous, abundant, and precious God, bless our offerings of presence, ability, and resources as we participate as your co-creators. Amen. Turn me from 
Let us pray. Spirit of truth, you know what we can bear. Strengthen us with your truth so that we may claim truth for ourselves and proclaim it in the world. Bless us, O God, as we continue to search, to discover, and as you continue to reveal in our lives. This is our prayer. And now, people of God, may the peace of God assure you. May the God of life invigorate you, and may the God of wind direct you. Go in peace and hope to transform your community and the world to the glory of God, now and always. Amen and Amen. <laughs>